He will introduce me to Luke and Timothy. He will introduce me to Luke and Timothy. I will be so glad to meet them, and they'll be so glad to meet me. He will introduce me to Luke and Timothy. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. I will ask him about his journey, and he'll tell me about them all. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. I will ask him about that trip to Philippi. I will ask him about that trip to Philippi. That miracle at midnight when the jail doors open wide. We'll sing those songs they sing at Philippi. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. I will ask him about his journey and he'll tell me about them all. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. God changed his name from Saul to Apostle Paul. God changed his name from Saul to Apostle Paul. The light shone down from heaven and God said, Saul, Saul. He changed his name from Saul to Apostle Paul. Woo! One of these days, I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. One of these days, I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. I will ask him about his journey and he'll tell me about them all. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. Yeah, come on now. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. I will ask him about his journey and he'll tell me about them all. One of these days I'm going to sit down and talk to Paul. I'm gonna give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm gonna give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm gonna give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, The highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, for all the things He's done. I'm going to give the Lord. Hallelujah, for all the things he's done. One more time, come on again, the Lord, the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on again, the Lord, the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on again, the Lord, the highest praise. Hallelujah for all the things he died. Yeah, for all the things he died. Woo, hallelujah. Hello, somebody. It takes two to carry the cross. That's apparently my duty, so I was trying to work on that, and I felt the Holy Ghost come on so strong. I had to step away and find a place just for a few moments to get along with God. And the closer I got to church tonight, the heavier the burden got. I'm going to preach to us 
If the Holy Ghost, then you'll help me. Praise God. The book of Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. Genesis 5 and 21, first book of your Bible. Written by the prophet Moses. Most likely on Mount Sinai when he asked God to show him his glory. And God showed him the hinder parts. And it is greatly believed, and I personally believe, that is when Moses started seeing the beginning of unfold. He was not there at the creation of Adam. He was not there at the flood of Noah. He was not there at the call of Abraham. He was not there at the betrayal of Joseph. But through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, God unraveled and showed him the things that had transpired before his time. Genesis chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. The Bible reads of a familiar person in scripture that we all know about the bible said and enoch lived 60 and five years and begat methuselah it was after methuselah was born that the bible records and enoch walked with god enoch walked with god after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years and Enoch walked with God Moses is trying to get a point across to us about Enoch Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him Chapter 6 and verse 9. Chapter 6 and verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. The book of Hebrews chapter 11. And verse 5. The writer of Hebrews group, groups these two men together. And he says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And was not found. There's fixing the day we ain't going to be found. Amen. Yes, sir. Because God had translated or raptured him. For before his translation... He had this testimony. This is what walking with God does for you. It gives you a testimony. That Enoch pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. You cannot get any further Pass that comma right there if you don't believe that he is. You must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being one of God, of things not seen as Yet, that is what walking with God will do. You'll see the invisible. And Noah was moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which he condemned the world. And became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. First Peter chapter 3. You don't have to turn there. Just listen to me. First Peter chapter 3. Beginning at verse 20. 19 rather. By which also he 
meaning Jesus, went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Why did you wait, God? He answers the question. The ark was a preparing. The ark was preparing. I feel like just kind of picking up where we left off last Sunday morning. On zeal without knowledge. And what does it mean to live right? Tonight, I want to talk about walking with Him. I want to talk about pleasing Him. And I want to talk about while the ark is preparing. Raise your hands right now if you would. And behind that hand, I want a lifted voice all over this house. Church, I stand before you trembling in my soul under the burden I feel. It's not a burden of negativity. It's not a burden of worry and anxiety. But it is a burden of the word of the Lord that wants to set somebody free. There's some parents that need to be loosed from some things tonight. There's some young people. There's some teenagers that need some instruction tonight. There's some parents that need a little light shine into the house of what's going on with the babies. Come on, somebody. We need to leave this house with a fresh desire to walk with them. Come on, lift your voice a little bit more. Jesus, we worship you. Is everybody shouting Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Clap your hands to the Lord. Oh, 
the church is not praised at all because we don't care who the president is because we know who the king is. Well, while this world is mulling over the turmoil, being depressed and oppressed, while they're marching the streets looking for change, we've got the only thing that will produce the change that they're looking for. And that is in the presence of the Lord. I could stand here tonight with a smile on my face. I could stand here tonight and go home and lay my head on my pillow. But thou lying awake in worry and anxiety. Because I know God is on the throne. And he's king of kings. And he's Lord of lords. Not only is he that. But I am his child, and he is my father. It is a man that knows me best, yet he loves me most. He's the one that died and bled for me. Why should I worry? And why should I be afraid? I will not fear the 10,000 demons that kept around about us because I got a revelation from the Word of God. When the enemy's got you surrounded, God's surrounding your enemy. It is God that fights the battle. It is God that wins the victory. It is God that it is God that is the Prince of Peace. It is God that offers everything that our soul longs for. My God, I wish we could get under the load tonight and realize we're racing the rapture. Jesus is coming. People are looking for normal. They're looking for peace. You gotta hear me tonight. Even apostolics, they're wondering when peace is ever gonna come again. When normal's gonna come again. I'm not too certain we'll ever go back to normal. At least I hope not. I hope we go to abnormal. Let's come out of Shakai. This world's looking for tranquility. This world's looking for peace. But God's looking for a church that will take advantage of the opportunity. And when they see a riot, they can be like Paul and see an open door and say there's many adversaries, but God's got a door open and I'm not leaving that business until he opens the door and I walk through it because there's many souls in this city that need to hear the gospel. The only thing that has not raptured the church out is because there are still people that need to hear Acts 2 38. The only reason I see the church of Jesus Christ being here is because somebody still needs to be baptized in Jesus' name. But the day is coming when the fullness of the Gentiles will be come in. That those that are walking with God is going to enter into the ark of sacred. And they're going to rise above the wrath of God that's going to be poured out upon this world. My God, you've got to get a glimpse. We're fixing to leave here. We're fixing I'm seeing folks just wanting life to be like it was six months ago. I was telling my wife earlier, I said, I wonder if it's ever dawned on us that we're actually living in the day that we always said would eventually come. Yes, sir. We preach Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, till we beat a dead horse to death. And we always both said we believe it. But now it's time to do more than believe it. It's time to live it. And we can cry about we wish we 
to go back to Matthew 23 and the Mark 12 and the Luke 20. Baby, oh, I, I had a good brother in this church tell me a while ago, and I'm going to steal it from him. He said, I never find in my Bible when prophecy unfolds that it ever refolds back. Baby, when it unfolds, it just keeps going. We've got to understand that we're living in the last days. Jesus is coming. You better get ready. You better get right. You better be pure. You better be without spot. You better have blemish. Because we're living in the beginning of sorrows. And for the world, it's only downhill from here. But for the church, there's a calling up yonder. I'm not worried about it because I know the rapture is going to take place. And if you ain't ready for the rapture, then you might want to be worried. But if you really believe that Acts 238 is the only plan of salvation, then you really believe that there's only one God and He demands holiness and separation. Right now the time of living, right now the time of being, right now the time you put your money where your mouth is And not talk the talk But walk the walk And say for God I live And for God I die He almost shot for the little 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 for some kind of legislation. Go ahead. And I'm not saying it's not for a good cause. I believe every man, regardless of his skin color, is made in the image of God. I, I don't care if they're black or white, Latino or Hispanic or Asian or Indian. I, it just doesn't matter to me. I believe we're all equal in the eyes of our Creator. We all belong to the same race called the human race. And if you've got racism in your heart, if you're prejudiced in your spirit, you'll split hell wide open. Hear me right now. If you've got prejudice in your heart, the lake of fire will be your home. When you get flesh out. That's why whatever this world does and whatever this world's looking for. Be careful, church. You don't get on this world's bandwagon. Because we already had the solution. The world is just now catching up and realizing that they have a problem. Last days. Yes, we are. We got to walk with God. Yes. We got to spend time with Him. Yes. We got to let Him get His hands on us, yes. and we need to get our hands on Him. Yes. It is the last days. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I personally am looking for the rapture. Yes, sir. Every minute I live. Yes, sir. It may not happen for another 10, 20, 30 years. But I'm telling you, as I see the Word of God, and I see what's going on in the world, I don't need to see another thing. I, oh, I know we preached it for years. Then, we, then all this happens in 2020. And 2020 has been something unique. It's been like the proverbial swing that has a brick wall right behind your back. And you swing forward, but you can't swing back without hitting a wall. Hey, let me tell you something. I'm not concerned about that at all. Because what I'm a part of is out of this world. Oh, I'm telling you, I do more than just come to Bible Way Church. I'm born into the church. I am the church. Now, I don't know why I can't get off this subject here. Because somebody needs to have a revelation. Are you up this world? Or are you of the world to come? Are you of this earthly? Or are you of the heavenly? My God, do you live after the first man Adam, which is earthy? Or do you live after the last man Adam, which is the Lord from heaven? 
I'm telling you something uh, mm. that God uh, mm. has a people mm. and he's getting them ready uh, mm. and right now uh, mm. from now to the rapture mm. all we need to be concerned about uh, mm. all we need to be worried about uh, mm. is preaching this gospel mm. to every creature mm. to everybody that we're here mm. that crowd uh, While you're sucking each other's business, mm. and you're keeping your nose out of the Father's business, mm. it is the only thing keeping us mm. from the rapture. Mm. The only thing that kept mm. the flood mm. coming in Noah's day, mm. because there was a man mm. that said, I'm going to build, mm. I'm going to build, mm. while the ark mm. was preparing. Mm. God said, I'll wait mm. for somebody who worked. Mm. I said, don't miss it. God said, the one time the long suffering of God waited was when there was a righteous man that said, I'm willing to work. And God said, I'm willing to wait. And I won't pour the flood until the ark is done preparing. I got in there over the time to get the work. The pitch without right now is that time. Enoch and Noah is seamlessly placed one after another in the book of Hebrews. Now I think it is for a reason. Because Enoch and Noah in the early chapters of your Bible are types and shadows yes, sir. of the rapture yes, sir. of his people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Enoch begat Methuselah. Methuselah's name means dark. Three times in the King James Bible is the word dark mentioned. In the original language, whether it be Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek, it's all a different word. But in English, the dark is connected to one thing in your Bible. The dark is connected to one purpose in the King James Bible. Amen. And that is death. Yes. Go home and read it, Proverbs 7. There was a young man that went by her corner. While the Bible said her good man was away. And she put on her harlot garments. Yes. And she decked her bed with the jewels of Egypt. Uh, and all kinds of frankincense that was good to the young man's senses. And she says to the young man, grasp him, kisses him, and says, come, let us make love for the night, for the good man is not home. And in his youthfulness and in his, uh, his early stages of life, he goes home with the harlot. And he does his business just to wake up in the morning. And this is the Bible's words, not mine. When the young man wakes up with a dart in his liver, when the harlot has got her first bite, when the seducing Spirit has lured you in and brought you in for the kill. And the young man dies. He dies a man ignorant but yet seduced. This is a dart that, that Methuselah's name meant. Oh, when Methuselah oh, was born, the Bible said for the next 300 years, Enoch walked with God. And all says that Enoch walked with God and was not 
But the Lord took him. And he, before he took him, he had a testimony that he pleased the Lord. Uh, but it wasn't until there come a dart in Enoch's life, shall I say a thorn in the Paul's life. And Paul said, remove the thorn. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient for thee. Sometimes that dart has to get you right to where it keeps you vulnerable and it keeps you humble that you can walk with God. You cannot walk with God without Methuselah. Let me preach it like this. What some of you think is a hindrance to your walk with God is actually the very thing that's given you the ability to walk with Him. It's the very thing keeping you praying, keeping you passing, keeping you seeking the Lord. It's keeping you in your Bible and you can't walk with God until there's a Methuselah born. And it's no coincidence that Methuselah lived 969 years, which was the longest recorded age Amen. of anybody that we know of in history. Amen. Because what's keeping you humble better outlive you. Yeah. Come on. What's keeping your thorn in the flesh, keeping you praying better outlive you. It better be passed to the next generation. It better be passed to the next generation. Enoch translated. The Jew prophesied, uh, records a prophecy. A Jewish, from a Jewish writing called the book of Enoch. That he records in June 14. Saying the Lord would ascend from heaven. This is the man walking with God now, prophesying this. Somewhere in the 300 years, no doubt, he said, I see the Lord coming back with 10,000s of his saints. And let me just sum verse 15 to come and deal with everything that is ungodly. Yes. With the ungodly world, with ungodly people, doing ungodly deeds. He said, I'll see the Lord come. When you walk with God, when you see what is first, when you see what is first godly, then it is a lot easier to see what is ungodly. This brings me back to what I was preaching a while ago. You cannot live holy without relationship. Because you do not see holiness until you see him. If Isaiah, who saw the Lord high and lifted up, saw the seraphim saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The prophet, the prophet. For I'm a man of unclean lips. How do you see yourself, Isaiah? I didn't see myself unclean until I saw how clean he was. I'm telling you, when you stand at the judgment throne of God, he's not going to lie to look you up and say, all right, who lived it stricter? Who lived it holier? Who lived right? And who lived better? No, you're going to stand up to the holiness of God and God's going to judge you by His holiness and the only way I can be partaker of His holiness is to get a vision don't you remember Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14 follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see him you can't see him Without saying how holy, how holy, how holy he is. Isaiah saying, I'm not seeing how unholy I am. 
Not by how unholy my brother is or my sister is, but I got a glimpse of how holy he is. And all his perfection shone light on my imperfection. And all I could say is, woe is me. What does woe is me mean? It means I'm incapable. I'm not worthy. It's not within me to match such righteousness and holiness and purity. Oh, but it, God was not willing to leave the prophet with unclean lips. He got an angel to pick up a coal of fire and he took it and he placed it on his lips. Hey, yeah, that's why when you get the Holy Ghost, you speak with clothing times like out of fire. And it was a prophecy of the fire that was fall on Pentecost. It was a prophecy that was fall on men and women. And when they would see how unholy they were, they would begin to be made righteous and holy by the power of the Holy Ghost. Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God. In the next figure of faith, in the hall of faith, is Noah. Yeah. Of which the Bible said Noah walked with God. Right there in that sequence. With Noah we see how to not just build the ark, but to get in the ark. Amen. And how to be lifted up with Enoch by the ark. Because the ark is just a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. The key to the two types that directly correlate with the rapture in Genesis. The key that unlocks the door. Is to walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. When it's comfortable. Walk with him Peter. When he's on. The sandy seashores. But walk with him Peter. When he bids thee to come out on the water. Walk with him. Mary, when Lazarus is alive and well. But walk with him, Mary, when Lazarus is buried in his grave. Walk with him. John the Beloved, who lays his head on the breast of Jesus at what is called the Last Supper. Walk with him as he is judged in Palatine. Walk with him as he is sentenced to death by the mob. Walk with him. John, the only disciple that never left Jesus, that never backslid and went with the others, that went fishing and whatever it was they went doing. He walked with him even at the foot of the cross. Jesus looks at John and he looks at Mary and he says, John, behold thy mother. In other words, just keep walking with me. Oh, oh God. I wish I had time to preach that right there. He said, uh, behold that mother looking at Mary. And Mary knew what it was like for nine months to walk with him. For 30 years. 30 years. 
Jesus, she knew what it was like to walk with him. He said, oh, that mother, hey, I, I don't know if you really get it or not, but Mary walked with him more than his disciples ever did for 30 years compared to their three and a half. Why? Why did he say walk with Mary? Because Mary already knew what it was like to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. She already knew what it was. Oh, I got time to say. Walk and it changes everything. Walk and the demoniacs are exposed. But you gotta walk with him Amen. before you see Lazarus raised. Yes. But you gotta walk with him before you see blind Bartimaeus. Ah, you gotta walk with him before you see the one sick of the palsy he got out, uh, let, let down from the roof and healed. You don't see it. You don't know it's possible. But what the disciples saw for three and a half years was Jesus Christ healing the imperfection, fallen nature of man. Amen. Amen. Oh. You gotta walk. Yes. You gotta walk. Yes. It's not a sprint. No. It's right. It's a walk. Praise God. Let me say it like this. But if your walk with God is a cakewalk, uh, it's a fake walk. Yeah. Come on, man. Because sometimes it gets tiresome walking with him. Sometimes it gets hot walking with him. I'm feeling some of y'all right now. Come on. Sometimes it gets weary walking with him because the foxes have holes and the birds have nests but the son of man is a homeless man with nowhere to lay his head oh, you don't know where your next meal is you don't know where your bed is you sometimes don't even know where your family is but sometimes that's just the cost of what it takes to walk And if Enoch and Noah teach us anything, yes. if you're going to be ready for the rapture in this end time, yes. you have to, you have to. Yes. walk. Yes. 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 Yeah, ain't no wild walk to the back of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? How are you with him, David? Because I'm walking. I ain't got time to preach on this. Noah walked with God. And the word of the Lord says, Noah, the sins of men have come before me and they're stinking my nostrils. And I have repented that I've ever made man. So Noah... Build an ark. Yes. Isn't it funny how Noah was the only one on the planet to get the instructions to save the world? Amen. Amen. Come on. Noah, you think you got all the answers. He actually does. Amen. Noah, you really believe you're the only one preaching right? You wait till the water starts falling. Come on. Come on. instructions to build the ark. And the Bible specific, and I preached it before, I ain't going to re-preach it tonight, but he had to build it according to the pattern. Pitch it within, pitch it without. Three stories high, so many cubits long and wide and high. Because if God sends the storm, I believe I'll take his advice on what it takes to survive this storm. Amen. Because he knows what that boat's going to float on. So I think I'll just take it from him. But you're only going to get instructions to build the ark if you walk with him. 
Matthew 24. In verse 37. Matthew 24. In verse 37. The Bible reads like this. But as the days of Noah were. So shall also. The coming of the Son of Man be. Here's the condition of the world. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. I got a question for by the way. When did not how did Noah know when it was time to get in the boat? Easy. Genesis 7 and 1. The Lord spoke to Noah to enter into the ark. But baby, I gotta get this out the way the Holy Ghost gave it to me. How did Noah hear the voice? Because it was the same voice that told him to enter. It was the same voice that told him to build. If you will not hear the voice that tells you to build, you will not hear the voice that tells you to enter. I said you will not hear a voice that tells you the answer. Let me preach to you. If you will not hear Acts 2.38, you will soon realize that it is the same voice that says come up here and I'll show you. Thanks. Noah knew when to enter the ark because he walked with God and because he walked with God he was able to hear the same voice 120 years before and 120 years But watch this. Noah entered the ark. And the world didn't pay it any mind. Noah entered the ark. And nothing dawned on the world. Noah was gone. And the world didn't even notice. Oh, you don't believe me? Read the next verse. They were eating, they were drinking, they was giving in marriage until Noah entered into the ark. And here was the state of the world. And knew not until the flood came. The wake up call was not when Noah went into the ark. The wake up call was when the wrath of God was poured out on this world. I've got to preach to somebody. Your next wake up call might be too late. We might be done going in the ark. But I gotta preach to you right now. There's still a righteous preacher in Bible way. There's still a righteous preacher in the world that will preach the truth. And they'll tell you not just how to build the ark, but they'll tell you how to get in it. It's gonna come up to this world. Like a thief in the night, but to the church, we're gonna be looking for it. It's gonna come to this world. Oh, y'all don't believe me? It talks about the rapture. They knew not until the blood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is how we know the ark refers is symbolic to the rapture. Because immediately in verse 40, he said, Then shall
shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and one shall be left. In other words, two will be in the field. One will go in the ark and one will be left in the flood. He said, two women shall be grinding out the meal and one shall be taken and the other left. What's that for? Do you know not what hour your Lord calleth? I've got to tell you. And he goes on. He says, if you knew the thief was coming out a certain hour, you would lie awake and not let him steal. But he comes in an hour that you cannot. So shall the coming of a son. But don't expect the voice to go in the ark. If you defy the voice that tells you how to build it. Let me remind my way, Acts 2 38 is the only way. Acts 2 38 is the only boat that's ever gonna float. I'm getting out of this sick, sick world. I'm getting out. He's gonna keep me from right. He's gonna call me up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I plan on being there. But you're not going to be there if you don't walk with him. It takes walking with him. How to build it. It takes walking with him to get in it. And if there's one word that the Bible had to describe Noah, it was righteous. Remember all the scriptures I read to you Sunday morning about who was righteous? God alone is righteous. Thank you, Greg. God alone is righteous. He is righteous. How is no one righteous? Only by walking. How was Enoch raptured? Only by walking. The pressure of Noah was feeling the oppression of the world, mocking and scoffing. And look at that old fogey build his boat. He's been building that thing literally for a hundred years and ain't nothing happened yet. But what they thought looked like Noah's ignorance was actually God's grace in disguise. Because the long suffering of God waited for the last board, for the last pinch, for the last hinge of the door. Placed. If you're willing to work, Noah, I'm willing to wait. That scripture of First Peter is something. Because his long suffering to towards Noah caused people to die lost. And God said, That's fine. I'll come in with the body and I'll go to hell and preach to them yeah. if you're still willing to work. You gotta walk. When you walk with him. I preach this and I've taught this over the years, but I'm gonna go by it one more time. When you walk with him. You learn what to pay attention to Amen. and what to ignore. Yes. Come on, Lord, have mercy. It's probably hard to distract Noah yes. with people mocking him yes. when he knows there's an ark to be built. Yes. I don't have time to deal with them. Amen. I'm working on the building. If it don't pertain to the ark, it don't matter. 
because all that stuff y'all worried about, it's going to drown. Yeah. But I'm working on the only thing that's going to float. I'm working on the only thing that's going to get me out of here. I'm working on the only thing that's going to be the salvation of my household. I'm working on the only thing that's going to get my kids safe. I'm working on the only thing that's going to keep my family safe. I'm, I'm working on the only thing that whosoever will shall come, shall come. As the days of Noah were, so shall it be in the coming of the Holy Ghost. So shall it be. I'm not sure if I've ever quite felt what I'm feeling right now. Oh my goodness. No, if it's not about the ark, you ain't got time for it. That's right. Come on. But how does a man keep such focus? How does a man keep his eye on the prize? How does a man? Keep his mind on what really matters. I'll tell you how you walk with him. And you're not going to build a boat for 120 years if your heart ain't in it. You ain't going to build a boat for 120 years if there ain't something deeper than just following a list of rules on how to build it. So Noah gives us the key of how to rise above the distraction. Yes. Yes, sir. Rise above the silliness of this world. Yes. By the way, you got to find a way to rise above COVID-19. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. you got to find a way to rise above all this mask mandate junk. Yes. you got to find a way to rise above all this stuff about uh, the protest and riots and looting and you got to rise above being tired, not being able to find hand sanitizer on the Walmart shelf. That's right. So you got to just somehow escape it. Somehow, somehow. You gotta shake yourself loose. Yeah. Yes. That wants to drag you back. Uh, drag you into the affairs of this life. Yeah, come on. Drag you into the matters of this world. Right. You gotta somehow keep your focus. Living in a world of distraction. Yes, uh, yes we are. I saw headlines today flipping out over. Ooh, everything's up and back up. There's another coronavirus spike. Oh, there's a spike in hospitalizations because of Memorial Day gatherings. Oh. oh, this. Then I checked the local news article. Second lowest day on record since April 20th. Of positive cases. So I'm scratching my head and saying, you know what it is? It's the spirit of the age. Yeah. One to occupy you. Yeah. Distract you. Yeah, man. Come on. Make you fear. Uh, Am I going to get the virus? Uh, Am I going to die? Uh, come on. Well, guess what? One day you will. Uh, and if you're ready, you ain't going to be worried about the virus. Yeah. You ain't gonna be... yeah. If you're building the boat the way God said to build the boat, you're ready to go anyhow. But you see what it is? It's fear and it's manipulation that wants to grip you and pull. And it's distraction. The devil's pulling out all the stops he's got to distract us. He's doing everything he can to keep 
Noah from building that ark. He's doing everything he can. Saying, Noah might build the ark, but I'll make sure he's distracted long enough to not hear the voice that says, enter in the ark. Distraction. The devil says, how can I occupy your time? How can I distract them and pull them? To cause their ears to become deaf to the voice of God. To cause their eyes to become blind to the things of God. Distraction. You know what Facebook is to many of us? Distraction. You know what Instagram is to many of us? Hey. Come on. You feel that? Come on. You got that bar real quick. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. If it ain't about building the ark, it ain't worth your time. That's right. Hallelujah. We're wasting our time listening to garbage, eating garbage, watching garbage. Come on. Reading garbage. Come on. And it has nothing to do about the ark. It has nothing to do about the church. It has nothing to do about the rapture. It has nothing to do about you being saved. It has nothing to do about you being lost. Hallelujah. You ever wonder why Jesus told his disciples take no thought of what they're going to eat or drink? That's right. Because he said, I want you to be so focused. I don't even want you to think about where you're going to eat next. That's right. That's right. Oh, if we could obey that on a Sunday morning, we might have a move to God. There's something specific, and I'm coming to a close with this.